This is Mac OS Ken. Apple sort of responds to the Goldman Sachs report. Morgan Stanley weighs Apple pros and cons. And so many end of year lists and insights from Apple. It is Thursday, the 30th of November, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple has addressed the Goldman Sachs Wall Street Journal article without actually addressing the news in it. I told you yesterday of the journal report, which said Apple would be ending its consumer-focused financial partnership with Goldman in the relatively near future. According to the journal, Apple recently sent a proposal to Goldman to exit from the contract in the next roughly 12 to 15 months, according to people briefed on the matter. The exit would cover their entire consumer partnership, including the credit card the companies launched in 2019 and the savings account rolled out this year. Now a piece from Apple Insider has Apple offering comment on the issue without really addressing it. Quoting the statement, Apple and Goldman Sachs are focused on providing an incredible experience for our customers to help them lead healthier financial lives. The award-winning Apple Card has seen a great reception from consumers, and we will continue to innovate and deliver the best tools and services for them. While it doesn't really say much, says Apple Insider, the fact that Apple said anything at all is a good sign. The site says the statement should provide some peace of mind to existing Apple Card and Apple Savings customers. While that may be the case, a piece from TechCrunch is more interested in the deal between Goldman Sachs and Apple and what Apple's statement did not state. It's worth pointing out, the piece points out, that Apple would not go on record about the Wall Street Journal's headline, the details in its report, or speculations around new partnerships beyond the provided statement. That also leaves room for doubt, the piece continues, as Apple is not being transparent about the specific points the Wall Street Journal is making. An interesting note from Wall Street Wednesday that had nothing to do with the Goldman Sachs story... Apple 3.0 ran part of a note from Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring looking at institutional ownership of Apple. It is still light, in Woodring's estimation, banging a drum banged often by his predecessor, Katie Huberty. I'll be honest, the first part of the post had a lot of math that I had trouble following. That said, the second half was interesting, addressing pros and cons as Woodring sees them. Weighing heavy on the minds of Apple investors, the potential for a negative ruling in the DOJ versus Google case, and fears around China demand. The way he sees it, China demand declines are well known by the market, making the results of the DOJ v. Google case the most significant near-term risk. But even that is not a tomorrow thing. It's unlikely any ruling becomes settled law until mid to late 2024, in Woodring's estimation. In the meantime, there are plenty of positives to accentuate. Quoting his note, We believe relative strength in gross margins, services, and a return to growth in Apple's more cyclically sensitive segments, iPad, Mac, and wearables, can drive upside to estimates and valuation over the next 12 months. Longer term, the growth of Apple's installed base and upward pressure on spend per user will drive the long-term value of Apple's installed base higher. All of that is good enough to put the firm's bull case for Apple at 260 a share. That's not the stated target, though. Morgan Stanley has a buy rating on Apple shares and a 12-month price target of 210 bucks. Apple's annual donation to the Global Fund is underway. Formerly known as the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, Wikipedia describes the fund as an international financing and partnership organization that aims to attract, leverage, and invest additional resources 
to end the epidemics of HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria to support attainment of the sustainable development goals established by the United Nations. Apple generates money for the Global Fund year-round with a portion of sales of Product Red products going to the cause. Seasonally, the company also runs a special shopping promotion to raise revenue, and tis the season. From now through the 8th of December, Apple says it will donate $1 to the Global Fund for every purchase made with Apple Pay on Apple.com, in the Apple Store app, or at an Apple Store. Donations are capped at $1 million, according to the company. More info is available at apple.com slash product hyphen red. If you're running Steam on an older version of Mac OS, it is looking like game over for support. Apple Insider says the multi-platform game storefront and distributor is ending support for macOS High Sierra 10.13 and Mojave 10.14. That they've been supporting them this long is actually kind of surprising. The piece points out that Apple itself dropped High Sierra support in 2020 and Mojave support in 2021. It's not that games already installed won't work anymore, but if they stop working, that's it. No support and no guarantees come the 15th of February, 2024. Bummer though it is for those affected, Apple Insider says the number of people affected is relatively small. According to the piece, Steam reports that 98% of users are already running macOS Catalina or later, so very few users will be affected. Apple hit this week with lists of 2023's top books, audiobooks, and podcasts. No, as a matter of fact, I'm not there. Thanks for asking. Crime Junkie topped the 2023 chart of the most popular podcasts in the U.S., according to a piece from my download blog, proving, the site says, that people can't get enough of true crime podcasts. As for books... Spare by Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, was tops in nonfiction, while Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros took tops in made up stuff. In audiobooks, The Woman in Me by Britney Spears was number one in nonfiction, with Only the Dead by Jack Carr taking the top spot in fiction audiobooks. If you're reading or listening elsewhere, your lists may vary. The piece says Apple's charts are based on official download numbers from the Apple Podcasts and Apple Books platforms. That means sales and or downloads through Spotify, Amazon, Google, and other competing platforms don't factor in to the Apple lists. If you do some, most, or all of your reading on iPhone or iPad, I don't know how you do it. For me, iPad is too heavy for a comfortable read. Additionally, there is so much stuff to distract me on my iPhone or iPad. Email, YouTube, Mastodon. All kinds of flashing noisemakers to pull me away from whatever I'm reading or trying to read. Physical books or Kindle for me. But that's me. If you do some, most, or all of your reading on iPhone or iPad, has Apple got some stats for you? Another piece from my download blog says the Cupertino company has introduced a new Apple Books feature called Year in Review. Based on anonymized data, the piece says Year in Review presents the reads you enjoyed most in the year, the total time spent reading, your longest read, the series you've completed, your highest-rated book, and more as easy-to-share visuals. While the Apple Book service is available on the Mac, iDownload blog says the Year in Review feature is not. The number of countries is also limited. The feature is only available in Australia, Canada, France, Germany, the UK, and the US. Though it's been available for most of the year, yesterday was the day Apple Music really started pushing replay playlists for 2023. A piece from my download blog describes that offering, 
saying Apple Music Replay is a compilation of your activity on the Apple Music platform over the past year that includes specialized playlists similar to Spotify's Wrapped feature. Hey, do you think maybe that's why Apple's pushing this? At <clears throat> the piece says Apple's replay thing uses attractive visuals to present the songs, albums, artists, playlists, genres, and stations you've listened to the most throughout. Uh, well, the focus this year is on this year, though the piece points out that users can get replay playlists for every year they've been subscribed to Apple Music as well as the big fun highlight visualization for this year and last. I listened to the song Lodi by Creedence Clearwater Revival a lot when I had COVID. And the week before when I was getting COVID. Also, my favorite artist is one most people I know have never heard of. Trouble in Mind by Big Bill Brunzi was a revelation when I discovered it a couple of years ago. I cannot recommend it enough. Anyway, if you want to be a bore and bore people with your musical stats, or just want to see what you've been up to musically over the last 11 months, assuming you are an Apple Music subscriber, you can generate your Replay23 info at music.apple.com slash replay. And finally today... Just before I was getting ready to record, a piece from 9to5Mac hit with Apple's list of the apps of the year, again, based on its own app-selling properties. Running through a few, for iPhone, the app of the year was All Trails, while the game of the year was Honkai Star Rail. For iPad, app of the year went to Preta Makeup, with Lost in Play taking game of the year. And for the Mac... Photomator took the app of the year, while Lies of P took top honors in Mac games. There were also honors for the Apple Watch app Smart Gym, the Apple Arcade app Hello Kitty Island Adventure, and a list of apps selected by App Store editors for their ability to drive positive change through apps and games. Lastly, Apple named a trend of the year in applications, Generative AI. According to the company, apps are a reflection of culture, and in 2023, Generative AI captured users' collective imagination with its evolution unfolding in real time. Apps started integrating AI through the year in a variety of ways. Although many features are still in their infancy, they gave users a chance to see firsthand the technology in action and come to their own conclusions about the benefits and risks. Weird, right? Apple said the words generative AI. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and supported by people like you. Patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780- Four zero eight zero. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.